guys, Crew Blonde Wave. I'm Eric. I'm Calvin. Aaron. And we're back with Cassian Ender. Cassian Ender. Ender. Last time on Andor, we had uh, prison. A look into the death. prison. Yep. And uh, the Empire had made a mistake. A man was released on four, and then sent on back on to two. They found out, mm-hmm. so they burn them all. A mistake? Which mistake you mean? That they, they accidentally didn't release the guy that they released, or do you mean that they accidentally they, let everyone know, so they had to kill them all? Or everybody what? found out. So what was they the wanted, mistake? They wanted to keep the that. Mistake was that they they put him back into the system too close to where he was already in the system before. So now all the prisoners know that they're just recycling people and they're sure. not actually I releasing. I'm just him. saying, if you put him anywhere though, yeah, wouldn't he be like, "But I was just here. They released me and put me here." Like, Unless, not like, matter? maybe there's, like, a level where they're like, ah, fuck it, these people all know, but we don't want that to ruin the productivity of the levels here, you know? Or it needs to be far enough away because, like, everyone's innocent yeah. in prison. You know, so we saw, like, like... Oh, they already did this. Like, ah, shut up, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's like probably a, what I would say. It's like one guy saying it is just, ah, oh, shut up, you know, mm-hmm. we're just trying to get through our, our count, like, yeah. our day count or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then, like, somebody from there recognizes him mm-hmm. from before, you know? Cool. Yep. Uh, and as Cassian said, no one's ever getting out of here. And I think Kino is like, all right, never less than 12. <laughs> He's ready. He's ready to, uh, to get into the uh, the prison break. So uh, escape this time? Well, yes, this is I the think so. Uh, and uh, our poll was, will Kino make it out of the prison? Ladies and gentlemen, 29% of people said yes. Uh, 69 people. No! Nice! nice. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Because <laughs> they never add up. <laughs> uh, Kyle West says, I don't think he will, but it'll be a badass death. Leia says, I like him, so probably not. Mm. It's usually what happens. Prince he- is a word. Oh, good. No, it's okay. The people that we hate normally survive much too long. The people we love die too early. Do we hate, hate or love this guy? Except in the case of Tim. I love him. He died exactly when he was meant to. Tim. I could have been without him sooner. Okay. Tim. I could have been without him much sooner, but <laughs> if there was a time Bix where... Bix is out of his league. Yeah. Tim. Prince of the Word over Sam and says, he has the same chance of escaping as Gollum surviving falling in Mount Doom. Aaron, you know how much that is? So you're saying Put there's a, a chance. <laughs> yeah, there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chase Gardner says I got a bad feeling about this for Kino's future if he helps Cassian out yes hmm. uh, Fetty Crunch says to keep the lore intact Kino will obviously escape but suffer a major injury during the escape this injury will awaken latent force ability which what? will later turn him in to Snoke. Snoke he's much too old I mean I had a crazy My idea boy. that son of darkness DNA you yeah. know, cloning Whatever. Yeah. But I don't think it's specifically going to happen. But I love the idea. <laughs> it's a ridiculous it's idea. ridiculous idea. I know a lot of people discount Snoke in The Last Jedi, but he has some fantastic lines and dialogue in the beginning of that movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you just don't get to see him do much. The deed, uh, what do you say? The deed tore your spirit to the bone. <laughs> I always love that one. Uh, we'll end with Sam Clintworth, who says, My mind is telling me no. But my, my heart is saying yes. Hmm. So yeah, they think he's gonna die. What? But we... Plan works around a new man coming down. That'll be a place we'll have tomorrow. That might not happen again until it's too late. I'd rather die trying to take them down than die giving them what they want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do, buddy. Fuck yeah. Hmm. A doctor came out. Didn't do much, did he? Kino. We will have immediate facility compliance or we will be activating floors without warning. Chief, floor! Uh, they fried two shifts to keep it quiet. You heard him say this. How do you know that? I don't believe it. He's only a doctor. Kino, come on, man. No one is getting out! Oh, this music. Good. Together. Strong. It's a different show. It's still him. 
So let's get our heads back in our cells and start figuring this out. <laughs> Looking right at him. Fucking Melshi's she's like, yes. <clears throat> what was the name of the other guy they were talking with? Melshi and something else. Sort of a B. Bedork. Bedork? I don't know. It was B I. Bedork! B don't write it down, you have to scratch it out later. There is only then and now. There is only one way out. Play it how you want. But I'm gonna assume I'm already dead. Uh, fuck. Mm. Assume you're already dead, there's nothing left to lose. Mm-hmm. Hmm. God, I hope he makes it out. <laughs> the Empire's new regulations, made without Senate consultation, I might add, are as cumbersome as they are avoidable. They've mm -hmm. made a game of it, and we play. Anything that is more complicated is also more liable to failure. What will it cost? My fee. We assume it's a percentage of funds transferred. I want no fee. Money Favorite. means very little to me at this point. Mm. I'd prefer not to owe any favors. I'd feel far more comfortable paying you for your trouble. A drop of discomfort may be the price of doing business. <laughs> I'd like to come back here at least once. Oh, I'm sure that's something that can be arranged. I have a 14-year-old son. I'd like to bring him with me. Mm -mm. You can't be serious. Change drill and marriage. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, fuck. A betrothal. And what are we talking about? An introduction. To the daughter. The daughter's 13. She'll soon come of age. Two young people, attractive and privileged young well, villain citizens. The rebellion, man. It's a lot to think about. I'm not thinking about it. That's the first untrue thing you've said. Oh, <laughs> fuck. It's been a pleasure. I mean, this could fund the rebellion. Sure. Hmm. This is not a betrothal. It's just meeting just an introduction sure yeah, yeah, but that's we know what that means it's what does that mean it's just a step stone he's to it. trying to get his position up sure yeah. marriage sure like that's his goal but could you not just have the introduction and not push it further he's still on board i want out don't care how i'm dead i'm dead hey i'm hey, pretending to be dead everybody's freaking the fuck no. out don't die till you put up a fight yeah. can't be in vain one more out one way out. <laughs> Come on! Yeah, that's the other person, I think, right? That, yeah. was, that was working with him before? Yeah. He was like, I have a new way. Yeah. That's Bedork. I have a better way. Damn, they're Stop right there. They're on program. Unlaid all the time, too. Head, eyes front, feet down. I feel real bad for this guy. Yeah. Oh, he's freaking out, too. I'm even watching. Calm down. How? I thought you were dead already. This guy's freaking out. Yep, got a bad feeling. I don't like it. You gotta be useful, dude. Are these just weapons to fight with? Oh no. It's so tense. objects. What happened in there? <laughs> Do not go in there. <laughs> Pissed all over myself. What did you say to me? I said nothing. I mean, if you want to say something, you should say it now. You start and get them! Alright! They're distracted. Oh, Halfway out. go! One way out! No! You want these Oh, yeah. I get it. Fuck yeah! Go, Line of sight obstruction. He's holding the. He's holding it. Get it! Oh, Open oh, dork! Climb it. What are you doing? Oh, this poor guy. He's done nothing. Oh, damn. This might be better, though. Got it. Oh, got it. Shuck his ass. Yes. Do it in the balls. Oh, I was just done. Do it in the oh, balls. Fuck, man. The new guy. Yeah. Attack. Just attack. Yes. Oh, just start chucking shit. Oh, yeah. People are already dead, right? That's the idea. Yeah. You got oh, no. Oh, I, knew I knew it. Damn, Bidoc. so real. Fight the 
Shorted it out. Yeah. Now nothing works. Oh, he was on the floor. Attack! <laughs> He's already dead! No fear now! <laughs> Man, I've seen the fear now. Come on, in the race! Get this guy down and get that gun. Grab his boot and pull him through the railing. Yes. Rip his leg oh, off. Oh, I know. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. No! Everybody's doing their part. This is a mini rebellion right here. Punch! Yeah! Yes! Yes! The music's so good! Throw a gun down, Akita. Come on! Climb! Climb! Riot! Riot! We're all gonna... Oh, oh now my gosh! Oh my gosh! Lower levels. Trickle down. Rebellion. <laughs> Fuck. We're releasing these guys too. Yeah. Oh! That's amazing. One way out! One way out! Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! Those guys are like, what the fuck's going on? One way out! You shouldn't be here. Turn it off. Excuse me? Turn it off! That could mean so many things. Turn it off! I'll turn it off. <laughs> I love the wall. Just can text stuff. We did. So good. Mm hmm. Move! On program! No! <laughs> <laughs> they know what oh! that means. They know what that means. It has to be you. Come on, Kino. Come on, Kino. You do this every day. Tell them what to do. You're commander now. Is that the best you got? Come on, man. How long we hang on, how far we get, how many of us make it out, all of that is now up to us. All the floors are cold. Take a step, yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we will never have a better chance than this. We know that they are making up our sentences as we go along. Mm -hmm. We know that no one outside here knows what's happening. And now we know Ugh. that when they say... I love this shot. <laughs> there is one way out <laughs> right now the building is ours you need to run climb kill run climb kill run, 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 if i was casting i would remember this shit when i was going down to scarif right Ugh. come on this is a hell of a thing Ugh. let's get out of here Whoa, They're all moving that's towards cool. the middle. What's happening here is exactly what is happening in the galaxy. Oh, oh easy trample. guys, easy. help him out, help him out. You heard him. him. Up. Everyone gets it. Oh, they're all hiding. They're all hiding. It's crazy. Yeah. Quiet. Make the Empire fear them. Oh, I'm so dead. I have so many chills. Fuck, man. What? Why? Man, that's we one way out. out. We made it. That's broken bone territory there. That's... What's wrong? I can't swim. Can't swim. No. What? what did he say? Man. I can't swim. No. Oh. You see somebody? Take him with you. No. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. They're literally escaping what looks like the Imperial Cog. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so good. Ah, uh, there's more. Oh, <laughs> it was so cool. Ah! <laughs> Come down here. <laughs> He's like why screaming. Are we, why are we following? This is the Imperial guy the who's dude, yeah. investigating stuff. This is a trap. Press the buttons for two fifteen. The guy who went to meet. We'll have privacy. She thinks he's building a rebel network. She started looking into stolen Imperial naval equipment, and now she's looking for a link to Aldani. 
Dead Ramiro. <laughs> he knows already. It's 50 men. You're worth more than that. You have to warn them. To what end? Ruin everything? What better way to reassure the ISB there's no leak in security than sacrificing Krieger? I'm doing this for you as much as anything. Having the spy in the ISB is more worth having. See, that's the difference between Mon Moth and. Oh my god, he's so cool. <laughs> he is. The timing on that. <laughs> I wake up every day to an equation I wrote 15 years ago for which there's only one conclusion. I'm damned for what I do. I'm condemned to use the tools of my enemy to defeat them. I burn my decency for someone else's future. I burn my life to make a sunrise that I know I'll never see. I need all the heroes I can get. <laughs> Luthen sacrificed his soul. <laughs> okay. Oh shit. Oh. Hey. No. Scar's guard. Yeah. That's, <coughs> that's one of the better. <coughs> we found wood. Alvin, you're allergic to great monologues. Uh, I held it in. Sheer force of will. Well, those two got away. <coughs> Together. Yeah. yeah. We have no idea about Kino, though. I don't think he made it. This is my favorite episode. <laughs> we can't keep saying that. <laughs> I haven't said it for a while. Andor and Melshi made it out. I wasn't sure if that was going to happen or not. They totally did. Man, when, you know, <laughs> when, uh, when Kino, like, I think he had this real moment of, like, fear when he was looking at the console and I think, like, what they're going to have to do. You think he realized, like, oh, we have to swim for it and I'm not going to make it. But I can get everybody else there. Now that you realize, like, like they knew what they were doing. They knew they knew that they're surrounded by water. That's crazy to think about. If that's I don't what, know. if that's what the I, I think that's for sure. That's what it is. He felt that fear because he knew I'm not getting out, but I can get everybody else out. I don't know. I mean, it depends on what one way out meant. I thought it was meaning like we're already dead. Yeah. Or one way out is that we're already dead. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. sure. So the one way out is just might as well just be we're, we're already dead, just go. Right? <laughs> yeah. Keep just fighting until we die. It's yeah. like what Calvin said, like when they were gonna fall. It's like, dude, they're gonna hurt themselves jumping out of there. But that's the only way out. Yeah. But I don't know. I I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. It might be a mixture of like what he's been doing as well. And like if I do this, there's definitely no turning back kind of thing. But I don't know. It could be really to like I gotta swim. I don't know. Yeah, I I, I think that he was like, I'm already dead. Yeah. I, I, I mean, know. if it was that, you figure he would just jump. If he's like, if I'm already dead, I'm just sure. going to jump. I'm either going to die or I'm going to force myself to there, swim. There might be a th you know? thing in there where it's like, well, I don't want to fucking land on someone or have someone drown themselves trying to save me. You know, sure. after he gave that direction. <laughs> Maybe it's he thinks it's better for everybody else if he doesn't jump. And that's a big thing, like, with lifeguards and stuff. Like, they have to really drill it into you. Like, if for some reason you feel like you can't save this person, that person can kill you by holding on to you and, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. So, And they can't even, like, at that point, they're not even choosing mm -hmm. to hold on or not. It's yeah, just Their a, brain is just, just telling them they have to. So, I don't Maybe. I don't know. I don't want to, you know, try to throw so many layers in there that it becomes too complex because it's such a... I, I just love that they can just go to another level and... Just say we're doing it, go, and everybody just fuck yeah, because <laughs> that rumor's already been spreading. Yeah, it was such a amazing moment after. You know, it's very much like the the Aldani episodes, right? Like there's just so much shit like being pushed upon you that whenever this something like this happens, it's it's a release. It's even more outstanding, in my opinion. And I guess I just I wasn't thinking about like I don't know how much of the other levels knew of what was going on. They like, said that it was going to spread eventually, but it just takes so long, right? Well, I mean, they said the night shift like yeah. would find out eventually, mm -hmm. but they were referring to the the prison break. Yeah, they yeah. Had said last episode that uh, you're freaking out about like it takes a week for information to get just like a word to, to get, get to here. us. Yeah, and you're freaking out about something across the, the, yeah. the thing. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that could have also just been him saying that may have been enough information to the the rest of the levels. Yeah. 
to escape because they already didn't even know what was going on. They already had their sentences doubled. They're gonna be like, "What the fuck is going on?" Anytime someone new comes in, they like drill them for information. Like they just don't know. But when his, his when he goes across that that intercom, like I love that Cassian knew, like, "Hey, you're the one that needs to do this. Yeah, I'm not the guy. They'll listen to you because you have the words." He just believed in him. Did use Cassian's words too. Mm. Yeah, I think it's just like he's been a leader too. Yeah, like you might be more likely to listen to, "I'm the leader of level five versus sure. I'm a worker." <laughs> listen, listen to what I'm saying. You know, like I don't know. But he, we didn't see him die. No, we didn't see him escape. We didn't see anyone else escape either. But mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that he's necessarily dead. No, it doesn't. Definitely doesn't. But I like to think it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't like live living or dying like it doesn't take away from like that what what in my opinion could be like a real sacrifice which is like just get everybody there regardless of my own you know it's kind of like it kind of ties in with Luthen a little bit then too right like Luthen gives up everything it doesn't get to sure his you know, monologue you mean yeah like the idea is like I'm fighting for a sunrise that I won't yeah. see it's and on on Badonkagonk, we actually talked about this. Remember, you had your uh, your question about like, is the Jedi way the right way? And we kind of like hit this idea of like the Jedi in their genetic lottery being almost a ge- genetic curse because they protect freedom and justice and your family and the people, but they don't get to enjoy those things. No, you know, Luthen's yeah. kind of weirdly Jedi like in this situation, just extremely. They, yeah, they, they typically lose their attachments. they they don't have like. You're not gonna have a love of your life kind of thing. You're not gonna, you know, you, you can't have any of that stuff. Yeah. But you're fighting so everyone else can have that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it does kind of fall into the same general idea. It's kind of like that, but also the opposite because he's saying like, I'm, I'm cursed to use the weapons of my enemy mm-hmm. to fight them. Like the the Jedi would never use like. Manipulation, subterfuge, and Anakin yeah, and that's Skywalker and stuff like that. <laughs> Anakin Skywalker defeated Count Dooku with his own saber. Use the enemy, <laughs> his enemy's weapon. It's very literal. Yes, I know, but he's also <laughs> turning Sith in that very scene. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure, but then he also killed the Emperor with the Death Star. Yeah, I mean, hey, I, I his think, own lightning shooting everywhere. I, th- one of the reasons I think this his, might he went, yeah. went unsith there. Yeah. One of the reasons this might be my favorite episode of the show is just because everybody's struggle in each scene kind of informs the next person, right? Like, Mon Mothma hits a wall. I will not give that up. Luthen's over here, literally with a guy that has this, you know, this kid being like, I can't sacrifice this for my child. You know, I have a child. And Luthen's being like, fuck it. I will sacrifice everything. I have sacrificed everything. Yeah. That's... That's, and he's also that's a direct saying, comparison like, to Mon Mothma right there. He's also saying, like, sure. you've been in this too long. Any story that you could possibly come up with is not going to be enough for the ISB. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's we, we, the, the rebellion makes this huge leap forward mm-hmm. and we get this advance warning, and then you suddenly take a medical leave. They're not going to buy that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? He's like, you're in this for your kids so mm-hmm. that you could be her father, not so that you can save these 50 guys who ultimately. In the in the grand scheme of things, don't matter. Mm-hmm. Luthen's willing to also sacrifice those fifty yeah. to protect him and his family, mm-hmm. You're and more make sure that man. he is safe. Just because having someone with information within the Empire is much more much more valuable than having uh, fighters it's, outside. It's of a it, right? bigger asset than just having like here's a small group of soldiers fighting a bunch of Imperials. I'd yeah. rather have information of what the Imperials are doing than. Here's 50 guys that are fighting the Imperials. Do you think Mon can, like, Mon at the moment she is right now, can make that decision? For like, 50 men to versus... To sacrifice 50 guys for this ISB trade. Um, I mean, I don't think she's a sacrificing person. Yeah. Um, I don't think I she's mean, in the general mindset. I think she's in the... She she definitely later on isn't either. Like, she's very sad that. that Bothans died. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So... I think that, like, it's still, there's a sacrifice there, but she is... Not happy for it. Where I think Luther in that moment would be like, "We lost many good men yeah. to get this information, so let's use it." You know, yeah. he would push how important that we need to use this information is. Yeah. And Mon Mothma had to stop talking and let I don't know if it was Dadana or Nadine or which one it was. I think it was Nadine. Cr- Crick's Nadine. Nadine, mm-hmm. not Nadine. I think it was. I think she let him take over. Mm-hmm. Well, fake beard guy. She goes to Akbar, and then Akbar goes to Nadine. Yeah. 
I just remember her stopped talking, and then yeah. someone else took over. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember who it was. One of the generals, captains, admirals. You know. <laughs> yeah, who also was an Imperial defector. Her sure. Guardian. You get to rescue him in the Rogue One, or I'm sorry, the Rogue Squadron game, in '64. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love that game. <sighs> no, you know what? I really love, and maybe I'm again at Star Wars. I read too much into it, but the line "I burn my life for a sunrise I'll never see," I feel like is the <clears throat> it is the Luthen and Saul Guerrera side of the rebellion, whereas Leia, and we learned this line through. Uh, through Admiral, Admiral Holdo in The Last Jedi, but Leia has that saying, like, hope is like the sun. If you only believe in it when you see it, then you'll never make it through the night. Luthen knows he's not going to see the sun, but he knows that on this side, like, you still have to do that fighting. Like, it can't be just one or the other. Right? Sure. It's, he's it's, in the night right now. Yeah. He's in the night, and he doesn't think he's going to make it the morning. I don't think he will. <laughs> but if he didn't do the things that he does, no one will. Sure. And so it's such, I, I don't know if that's, you know, uh, on purpose in terms of the, the, the sun being that metaphor for rebellion, but I like it. I think it's two sides of the same coin. I'm really curious to see what Luthen's like, his real contributions to all this end up really being. You know what I mean? Like, we don't have like that definitive answer like we have in different EUs of what has created, created the rebellion. Mm -hmm. Like, why they all really come together. Yeah. Like, Rebels kind of touches on that a little bit, mm -hmm. but, like, there's other stuff. Like, Luthen seems to be a big part of that. Mon Mothma seems a big big part of that. But, yeah. like, what really brings them all together to where, like, in Rebels season three, mm -hmm. whenever they have, like, their whole fleet there getting ready to attack, and then yeah. Admiral Thrawn shows up and starts attacking them. Yeah. Like, there's already a group of, like, a Rebel fleet, mm -hmm. you know? Like... What got to that point? And yeah, is it Luthen sure. the big part of that? Is it Mon Mothma that's really a big part of that? Is it both of them? Yeah, I mean, Luthen, he said that this is a dream and, or, or something that he started 15 years ago. So. Well, he had said that, I, I wake up every day for an equation I wrote 15, 15 years, years ago. ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I wonder what he's talking about. If it's more of like the Empire came in doing stuff and he's yeah. like, I have... I'm going to figure out how to stop them. And he's like, he figured out, like, this is the way I mean, to do it, but it's a long journey to get there. I mean, there. Mon Mothma and Bail Organa and Padme were all part of that delegation of 2000 that were against Imperial or the the Chancellor having this, the emergency powers and, and keeping the war going. So Luthen could have been part of something like that. Sure. 15 years ago is when the Empire was formed, right? Like sure. It's, it's uh, you know, we're five years from A New Hope. You know, if you think about this in terms of rebels, Ezra is 15 years old. Like, you know, he was born on Empire Day or close to it or whatever. But it yeah. seems like Luthen, that, that he, equation is a sub that he probably did that on Empire Day. He shares a birthday with Luke and Leia, I believe. Sure. Yeah. But maybe, yeah. Like, it's like the Empire took days, over and it's like, yeah. I got to figure this out. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? Here's my course of action. Yeah. I love that monologue. It's one of my favorite monologues ever. I think it might be one of my favorite monologues in Star Wars, and I do not say that lightly. <laughs> I've committed a decent amount of them to memory, and this one I definitely will. <laughs> yeah. What's another monologue that's really high up there? Uh, I'm trying to think of like monologues in the Star Wars like universe. And I mean, you know, I think of failure from Last Jedi a lot. Honestly, we are what. They grow beyond, right? Okay. Uh, that's probably one of my favorites. Uh, I mean, a lot of Yoda stuff in Empire Strikes Back hits me really sure. hard. Like, I don't believe it. That is why you fail. <laughs> those those moments of teaching, those moments of, like, getting into the mind of a character to tell them where their headspace is at and sure. where you need to be. I think Yoda does that really well, but yeah. I don't think he typically monologues too often. I think the one he mainly does is... There's a monologue when he's talking oh. about like what the force is. Yeah, he's like the rock. The sure, tree. I wouldn't. You know, like, yeah, that's not like focused on the word monologue. Then I'm just talking about just like characters getting a point across. Sure, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's different than like <laughs> I was like trying to think of like what monologues we have in Star Wars itself. Like I don't sure. think there's a lot yeah. of them. Um, that's why I think that one there is done mm -hmm. really well because it's just him, you know, yeah. just him talking and telling you how he feels and what's in his head and you know the sunless. Mm -hmm. The sunlessness inside his head, or whatever it was, yep. like the line he had. Like, I really like some of those. space inside his mind. space, that's what it was, yeah. 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 It's just, it's done well where it's only him versus like Yoda has some great things, but a lot of it works because of things that Luke is saying, you know? Mm -hmm. 
and it's just like this yeah this is why you fail do yeah. or do not like there's just some things that because of Luke it re- just it works really well mm-hmm. you are rich you will not eat them mm. mm. what's in there only <laughs> uh, Adam though is talking a little bit about uh, what we were talking about Luthen Luthen is perfectly encompassing the dark side of the alliance for me they are so desperate to defeat the Empire that many in that same mindset completely lose their way and it's by definition what goes on with Saul Guerrero to yeah. the point of madness. I mean, he's been fighting longer than Luthen. Yeah. And yeah. Losing Ever everything since, since, since the Clone Wars and stuff. You know, sure. I, mean, I don't know what Luthen did beforehand. I mean, he's older too. Yeah. So maybe, he, I mean, he was around during the Clone Wars. What he did, I don't know. Yeah. He seemed to be some kind of higher up, yeah. rich person. He does. Thing, I, you know? I, I really think that his, his antique persona is like, it's probably something that's. It's like one of the only real things about him. Because even whenever he's undercover, he's talking to Cassian about the Sky Kyber and how it was about, you know, celebrating the the pushback of the Rakatan Empire. Like he still has that like history buff thing, even undercover. Sure. So I imagine that's real. Yeah, I think I so wonder, too. Like, but I think it's kinda like it would be it would be closer to like when we talk about Batman and Bruce Wayne, right? Like mm-hmm. Bruce Wayne has Wayne Enterprises and yeah. he has like Wayne Manor and he is Bruce Wayne. And he cares about the legacy of his family. Yeah. yeah. But all of that is like the the trick slash the the misdirect or whatever yeah. and really Batman or really yeah. Luthen's like running of the rebellion is like the yeah. real him and everything else is just this is for show, so mm-hmm. no one thinks that I'm really doing this. But this yeah. is what I'm really. This is who I really am. And you probably could frame that in a way where, like, Bruce Wayne is what Batman has sacrificed to be Batman. Sure. Way, yeah. Right? Like he doesn't really have attachments, right? He doesn't really yeah. have too much. He doesn't have a lot of people he loves. He has yeah. Alfred. You know, he ends up getting his sidekicks and stuff. Yeah. But it it's dangerous for him to have a love interest or something mm-hmm. like that. And. He yeah, sacrifices go with just, so much just to be able to be Batman and keep people safer. Like, just with Batman Begins, if you just look at that movie, like, yeah, he can walk around with models in his car and buy hotels, but he can't be with the woman he actually loves. Sure, yeah. yeah. And it's like, well, if you kidnap that model, he's, it's not like he loved her or cared about yeah. her. It's not like it's a... Like, he'll want to save her because she's a person, you know, like sure. he would anyone else. as much as he would anyone else. Yeah. But it's not, it's not the same as, like, oh, well, he loves this person. I wonder if, if he used to be, like, a senator and re- he retired from that when the the emperor took over it's like well i can't make change here because the vote mm-hmm. failed nothing is ever going to change the vote i like to think he's not just because i think it would be important to show rebel leaders that aren't former senators like we already kind yeah. of have leia mon mothma bail organa when you know there's a bunch of senators in the uh, the room in rogue one where they decide not to go to scarif i like the idea of someone like luthan that's from another corner you know yeah I don't think he is a senator yeah I feel like we have a lot of evidence of senators who didn't agree with the emperor yeah but rather than like leaving they stayed and tried to like fix things yeah. or do something or whatever yeah. or they played both and sides you were saying like maybe he was not is right yeah like yeah maybe he was yeah. and because he's not like mm-hmm. uh whoever so it's like whoever when the state a senator Palpatine like, was a senator and then Years later, Padme was a senator, and Palpatine was no longer the senator. Yeah. So, like, he would have been, like, the senator of some other planet, and maybe over the course of time, it moved on to someone else. Sure. Kind of. But he still has that experience and that kind of... Yeah, but he, like, put his his position and stuff on hold so that he could work towards this other thing while still having, like, somewhat of a relationship with, with people in the Senate, mm. like he does with the collections. So you think more of, like, he did it after the Empire took over? Kind of. Uh, J Train has a question. Or uh, well, maybe when he saw it start to go that way. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, J Train has a question. J Train 13. Man, Luthen is intimidating. Do you guys think Luthen and his mole are setting up the beginning of what will become the Fulcrum Network? It's possible Luthen even takes inspiration from his given title, Axis, to come up with the name. We already had Fulcrum mm-hmm. as a code name back in the Clone Wars. Yeah. For this, yeah. Yeah, well, Saul Guerrero. Which was, was Saul Guerrero, uh, and then Asia. used by Ahsoka, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then it's been used by other people and stuff since too. Yeah, the yeah. network is like a is a communications network, primarily between Jedi and informants. So yeah. that's why the the imp- Empire doesn't really understand that it's specifically for friends of the Jedi in a way. So I don't think so, but I think it could be kind of like I, I do like, and we talked about it a little bit last you think week it can about complement it. 
Axis and Fulcrum being like you know different parts of the overall rebellion machine, you know. Sure, yeah, and maybe that goes towards them like giving up their their personal identity and becoming a part of a different machine than a mm-hmm. cog. Yeah, you know. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Kyle had a shot of them swimming, swimming out. away. Swimming out of the cog. Fuck yeah. Now you need a lever, a pulley, screw. Always need a screw. <laughs> you do. Uh, Grant Smith says, I will not ask whether we'll see Kino again. Instead, I'll ask, should we? Or is it better if we, and in turn, Andor, never learn what befell him? I kind of like the idea of leaving this open-ended, never knowing what Kino's fate truly is. So we see him again in Force Awakens as Snoke. <laughs> I don't want to besmirch Kino's <laughs> legacy. I like Snoke, but not as much as Kino. <laughs> yeah. No, and there's room for, obviously, Aaron's joking, but there's room. A lot of characters. Goes back a lot of actors there. have way different roles. Or am I? Mm. I mean, Clancy <laughs> Brown's in it like three, four times. Sure, yeah. yeah. Sam Witwer's in it a bunch of times. Yeah. So He goes back in there. He ties all the laces to those those non-shocky boots together and he uses them as a flotation device <laughs> like a raft yeah <laughs> um you know I, I i like what grant's saying here like maybe it's better to not know everything uh especially when you consider what that can do for someone like cassian andor and their growth right all like i said it in the reaction but man what what kino is saying over the intercom i would be remembering that shit when i was heading down on the SW, you know, uh, Rogue One ship, right? As we're going through the shield gate into Scarif and they're talking about make 10 men feel like 100 and, and uh, you know, Saul Guerrero said that a man with a sharp stick can take the day, like that type of stuff. Like I'd be thinking about Kino and what he said about just keep going, like there's one way out of this and that's we get those plans and we get the fuck out of here. I'd rather die, die. <laughs> trying to fight them yeah. than giving them what they want so I I think that you Kino's you know part of the story has been it's been my favorite I think of the show and I truly don't need more for that to remain one of my favorite parts of the show is it actor bias yeah I mean 100% well no Yes, it's but hard not, to say. But not in the way you're talking. It's about. hard to say because, like, if you just had anyone else in that role, yeah. like, it's hard to be like, "Well, I would or wouldn't like." Sure. Tom Cruise in that role, or well, I would or wouldn't was... like. I would not. <laughs> See. No, you'd like. It. Now it's character bias. Oh, but <laughs> throw anybody else in there, it does the same thing. I'm still gonna love that character. Like if it was fucking Sam Elliott, I'd love it too. You know. But when you say actor bias, I'm saying yes only in that these last two episodes have just to me shown that that guy can put any emotion on his face like I felt no dialogue whatsoever like I tr- just you I, can tell what he's saying with his face yeah. so much better like I mm. truly felt the fear when he was looking at that console after he had taken it over from that guy and he has this huge moment of hesitation and as I was watching it I was kind of like what is he <clears throat> what's happening that's why I think that I think it's like apprehension fear realization like I personally think it's realization that I am not making it out of here Sure. But I can get everybody else. But that's just because he gave me that emotion to be like, what? What is he thinking? You know? And that's what good actors do. <sighs> sure. It's the it's the giving your face such a neutral expression that whatever the the audience is feeling yeah. is translated onto your face or is projected. Right. Yeah. And it, it it's uh it's a really cool wrinkle in this overall episode story of what are you willing to sacrifice. Sure. Uh, Kerbo. Yeah. Well, good. I, I, regardless of Kino, I'd still yeah. like to know what the hell they were making in that prison. Because even they yeah. didn't seem to know what they were making in no. that prison. Yeah. yeah. Just that it was important. Yeah. So yeah. I, I like to know that because I was just I'm just curious. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're fucking the little intersection pieces. If you if you make like a a big uh, oh shoot what are those little uh, mechanical parts that you like build mouse traps and stuff out of. Connects. Connects, sure. <laughs> I don't know. Like something like that. Um, the little, the little intersections for like building a Death Star. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Like you just start start infrastructure. Them. That's why they're building just thousands and thousands of them. They're effectively just like nuts for the Death Star. They're just giant. Yeah. <laughs> giant nuts. Yeah. They're giant washers or something. Sure. Uh, Kerbo says Mon Mothma wasn't ready to sacrifice her daughter for the rebellion. It looks like Lita is the one person Mon cares the most about. 
do you think she will integrate Lita into the rebellion at some point, or will Mon try to protect her from the danger of it? I don't think she doesn't care for her, but I do think that the 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 marriage betrothal thing she had, like she's not a fan of, and she's also not a fan of Davo. Yeah. So like, getting in bed with him, or having to have her daughter get in bed with the his son, yeah. his son. You know what I mean? Like, what dangers do you put her in mm-hmm. with whatever this guy has done or is known for to have done? On top of already being in a betrothal that she apparently has no love for and never no, no. never wanted. You know what I mean? Because I don't I don't feel like those two have any chemistry. <laughs> you know what I mean? None whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. So they have anti chemistry. I feel like it's a mixture of those two things that she's like but on the other side of that is like what what can I do with this money? <laughs> you know? And that's the thing. It's like, like what would Luthen do? <laughs> you know? Like she's effectively signing over her daughters, not just having to go to bed, but life, right? Like that that's a that's gonna change her no, I just entire mean like, life. By like being in bed with, yeah. it's just like no, I get you, you are tied now. Yeah, because you are in this yeah. whatever skull Skolden. What is that uh, name? His name is Skull- Davos Skolden. Skolden. Yeah, whatever they end up doing, yeah. whatever their business yeah. is, like he's all in the favors. So like it seems like it's a little shadier. Yeah, and it makes perfect sense. Like he doesn't give a shit about money, but what he wants is status, and if he can have his family tied to. What is effectively Chandril and royalty. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's not yeah. like they care about this daughter. Yeah. It's just a, it's a stepping stone yeah. for them. I mean, maybe the son's better, but I don't mm-hmm. know. Sure. It might be that maybe she gives in and they're introduced and they do like each other. Sure. And he does seem like a nice guy, yeah. but the, the chances of that are slim. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the Chandril and like process is for that kind of stuff, but I was like, can you just have them introduced but not go any further than that and like I completed the favor you wanted you know like I get what you mean like on the technical level but I think that both of those characters understand what he's asking well he said I don't want a betrothal yeah I I just want an introduction yeah but I'm not taking that at face value from him if he's not honest then there's I feel like there's nothing that you can do with that yeah you know I mean, that's the that's the dirty business getting involved with thugs I think that's why she just decided to step away from it Mm mm-hmm because She's owing someone it. like him a favor is so much worse than owing the money. I think she'll do it. You think she'll do it? Yeah, I, I mean, don't think she's walked away from it. I think uh, she's thinking about it just like he said. Oh, yeah. No, I think she's definitely thinking about it. Yeah. I don't think she'll do it. Maybe that can be a poll later. Aren't they in a predicament right now where if they don't take care of money issues, they'll get caught eventually, and then every, everyone yep. there will be in trouble? Yeah. Like, a matter of time. Wouldn't it be yeah. safer to do this option? I, 100%. That's you why know? I think, I don't think Lucen would hesitate. I don't think Saul would hesitate, oh. but I think Mon might. No, I think no. she needs to think about it, but yeah, I yeah. think she's going to do it. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Um, uh, Matthew Kiley says, now that Andor is out of prison, could you see him meeting with Saul? Do you think that we could see some of the prisoners show back up in the show? <sighs> I mean, we don't know where a lot of them ended up. Some of them died. A lot of them died. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've said this before in the first arc or two, but like, like I said, like you know, there's a giant character list uh, in this show, and I think what one of the things this show is trying to do is show you that like everybody you see in the background of of rebel scenes in the original trilogy is someone. They all have a story, and I think that we're getting this giant, large amount of people, so that. Eventually, and I don't know if that's the end of this season, most likely the end of the second season, everybody that we see in the background of a Rebel Cell is going to be like, I know that person. Or at least, maybe that's kind of the theme of what they're trying to make it feel sure. like. Like, maybe maybe they're trying to be like, no, every yeah. person here was important. Yeah. All the guys in the Empire that were just cogs, mm-hmm. they're faceless, nameless numbers, yeah. you know? Yeah. They don't matter, but these people made a difference. Yeah. Maybe that's what... So I kind of feel like the yes, we will see some prisoners. We obviously won't see all of them, but like we're gonna see representation from all these storylines. I think in the rebellion, rebellion. Hmm. I mean, alternatively, you could also just have it where look at this. Everybody in this, there's so many important characters and background Mm -hmm. characters. They have names, they have stories and stuff. Like that's that's what we've been wanting for for all of Star Wars. Yeah, which is kind of what they did with a lot of EU. It's how. Quinlan kind of came to be, you know, lots lots of that stuff has always been a thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're just trying to, like, give more faces to more modern stuff. But maybe they could tie it into other things. I just, I don't want them to just force tie, like, see that guy over there? That's this person over here. And just do that for every single character in sure. Star Wars. 
Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm not saying like literally it's those characters in the in the original trilogy. I'm just, like the idea of it is what I'm saying. All right, uh, Chance Yeager says it seems like another reckoning is coming to Ferrix. Do you think Cassian will make it in time to participate? Uh, yeah, we had very, 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 very short scene of a Doctor uh, Milamoy, I think, and it sounds like they were talking about Marva. Uh, needing medicine. Mm-hmm. Well, she's uh, not taking medicine. They're not taking medicine, but needing help. And yeah. we, we know that she's uh, going and unlocking doors and, and uh, you know, maybe not all in the right mind, but she's ready. And I think that with what happened to uh, the, the one junker guy in, in the sun, you know, the, the torturer. Hung in the square. We also have Senta walking around there, too, and Vel. We, we might... See that this season, I, I'd be pretty well, sure. It felt like that one happen. guy was monitoring for the Empire side, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the and, one guy standing and there. Senta's monitoring for yeah. like Luthen. Yeah. yeah, I, I don't. My thought for it wasn't that there is a that she's not taking her medicine. I felt like it was a excuse to get a group together to talk because there's like sure. four people going into yeah. her house, and it's like, well, you could start, yeah, secret rebellion talking mm -hmm. if you can like make a reason. Now come here. We're worried about her. Come here, doctor, and you get yeah. like people, and then that doctor can easily go to places to talk to people because he's yeah. a doctor. He's like, he's making house calls. Yeah, it's right? easy to kind of like make a reason why he's going there. So, Very well, could be. That's that's what I thought. I'm like, maybe she's not actually sick, or maybe she is, and that gives you a reason of where Andor needs to go back to mm -hmm. help her or something. Could uh, also just be both. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think that we'll probably address the Anto Krieger thing at some point. We'll. we'll We'll more than likely meet Saul again, um, and then maybe end back up on Ferrix. I'm not really sure. This is the ninth ep or tenth episode, so we only have two more. Damn. Fuck. Fuck. Sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's always so yelling. Bad. Fuck. Uh, all right. Well, uh, when you were when we were going through the streets. And you just saw aliens. Uh, yeah, I was too. Stand. I was so hyped. I know. Well, Keto had my me. all of the hair on my body standing straight yeah. up. So I was just tuned for more. It reminded <laughs> me of uh, the last episode of Community we watched, where Jeff was like sitting there, like ha 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 ha. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Oh man. Community. Make sure you guys check out those reactions too. That's a highlight of the week. Yeah. Guys, so the poll for uh, this week. Do you think Mon Mothma will make the deal with Davo uh, with the offering of introducing her daughter to his son in exchange for getting the money mm -hmm. that she is trying to get? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that while sure there's hesitation, yep. I think that she will do it. I don't think she's going to do it. I think she's definitely going to feel a temptation, but I just don't think that... I don't think that she, she's going to be that type of person. I think that in Rogue One, we see there's a clear difference between Saul Guerrero's militancy and the way that she wants to operate things and bring Galen Erso to the Imperial Senate. I think that there's lines that she can't cross, and I think that makes her really compelling, but ultimately shows why she can't be the only one in the Rebellion making this shit work. Maybe, and this is option number three. I know you both what? love those. What are you doing? Number three. Maybe she it. introduces Vel to Davo's son. Oh. Her cousin. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not too bad. But your answer is no. <laughs> it's still just no. <laughs> I appreciate trying to get around it. It's like, will she make, take the deal? Yes, yeah. no, she will alter the deal. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, the poll's over at patreon.com slash blindwave. We only got a couple more left, so uh, join the fun over there. You can also get full-length reactions mm. there as well if you so choose to enjoy something like that and the next badonkagong episode on the 17th oh, at twitch.tv yeah. slash blindway so oh, dark disciple <gasps> oh. guys thank you so much for watching we hope you enjoyed this reaction to andor make sure you subscribe as we'll have the next one here next week when it comes up um, and also follow us at twitch.tv slash blindway we have live streams once a month for star wars badonkagong podcast we've talked about several books we talked about the jedi way we talked about tales of the jedi we talked about all kinds of stuff there um, so make sure you join us 17th of this month.